Go ahead. Thank you, Jen. Uh, about voting rights and these Texas lawmakers who have come to Washington, mm -hmm. do you know any of any examples from his 36 years in the Senate that Joe Biden just hopped on a train and left town to avoid a vote that he knew he was going to lose? Uh, welcome back. Um, <laughs> look, I think that the president's view is that um, these Texas legislators uh, were making a statement uh, through action uh, in opposition to efforts in their state to oppose restrictions on people's fundamental rights and their rights to vote in their state. That is why they departed. The, pre the vice president uh, met with these legislators yesterday. Uh, and the vice president, and the president, I should say, certainly applauds uh, their actions and their outspoken uh, opposition to states, uh, to efforts to put in place restrictive measures in their state. And maybe it is funny to think about it that way, but the president is talking about this as the most serious assault on our I don't, democracy. I don't think anything about. I don't think anything about this is funny. I think uh, what is important to note, though, here is that there are 28 states, including Texas, where there are laws. Uh, in place or in process to make it harder to vote. And it requires uh, bold action. It requires bold voices to speak out against that and make sure people understand their rights. That's exactly what's happening here. So does the candidate, uh, who's now the president, who told people he was going, he knew how to make deals with Republicans, he's meeting with Republicans today, does he think that the best way to prevent something bad from happening, that he thinks is bad from happening in Texas, is for these lawmakers to be hiding out in a different state or for them to go back and sit down at the table? The president fundamentally believes you should work together in areas where you can find agreement, as he is on the bipartisan infrastructure framework that is going to help rebuild roads and rails and bridges around our country, and also that you should be outspoken where you have concerns about affronts to democracy. That's what he did yesterday, and that's what these legislators are doing now. And then just quickly on Cuba, the DHS Secretary Mayorkas is warning people there, if you take to the sea, you will not come to the United States. Why is that? Well, first, I think it's important to understand the context of what the secretary was conveying yesterday, which is just that uh, it is still the case that it is not uh, the way to come to the United States is not uh, through uh, through uh, processes of trying to come to the border uh, that th without going through an asylum process or coming by sea uh, w without going through an asylum application process. Uh, there are certainly uh, programs uh, that through which that some of them have been uh, have not been reinstated. I should say uh, that were in place put in place by the uh, Trump administration that are being reviewed, as he said yesterday. That would apply to uh, the individuals and in people of Haiti and the people of. Cuba as well. Those have not been reinstated. They're being reviewed. That's what the secretary said yesterday. What he was reiterating is that this is not the time to travel irregularly. It's dangerous. People can lose their lives if they, as they have in the past. And as the administration tries to figure out the root causes of migration to the country, don't we know that the reason people want to leave Cuba is because they don't like communism? We and so as you're trying to figure out like what the processes are, uh, for these people who want to leave Cuba. Just well, well, I'm not sure what your question is. You guys have Why are people leaving time. Cuba, or what is the process for them getting here? I can explain either of them, but you tell sure, me. Yeah. Do you think that people are leaving Cuba because they don't like communism? I think we've been pretty clear that we think people are leaving Cuba, or not leaving Cuba, or protesting in the streets all as well, because uh, they are opposed to the oppression, to the mismanagement of the government in the country. And we certainly support their right to protest. We support uh, their efforts to speak out against their treatment in Cuba. I will say separately, an important question is also what happens when people are seeking uh, protection, or what happens when they are uh, attempting to flee. Uh, in the past, as I noted, we've had several humanitarian programs, such as family reun reunification parole programs for both Haiti and Cuba. Those were policies or po uh, processes that were in place prior to the Trump administration. Those have, not, those have not been turned back on, as Secretary Mayorkas said yesterday. He also said we're assessing the status of those parole programs. Uh, Haitian and Cuban nationals in the United States with a fear of return for, for to their home countries may be eligible for protection, such as asylum under U.S. law. Haitian nationals already in the United States may be eligible for temporary protected status. But migrants uh, interdicted in the Caribbean who manifest a fear are referred to USCIS 
for a protection screening. That's what happens. Those who do not manifest a fear or who are not found to have a credible fear following the screening are repatriated to their country of origin. Those found to have a well-founded fear of persecution or torture are not brought to the United States. They are refused to refer to a third country for resettlement. I'm sharing all of that with you so people understand what the process is when they're trying to make what a treacherous journey is and a challenging journey where people can lose their lives. But certainly, we have said many times, and I will reiterate here, that we support uh, not not just the uh, the role of peace of protest and peaceful protest. We stand with the Cuban people and their call for pre freedom from both the pandemic and from decades of repression and economic suffering to which they have been subjected by Cuba's authoritarian regime. Go ahead.